Have you noticed you cannot copy in GA4? Yes. <laughs> I'm Minna from Supermetrics. I'm Sophie. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about how we have been using GA4 for a while now and what are the things that we have found out and how Supermetrics in, for example, Google Sheets and Looker can help you and us to, to use the data. And for this video, uh, I think we're going to talk about a bit more about the metrics and the dimensions and then the data retention ownership and accuracy. So welcome. So talking about metrics and, and dimensions, at least for me, what I feel like comparing GA4 to universal analytics is that the the amount of metrics and, and dimensions are limited that you can see at the same time on the same report. How do you feel? Yeah, I agree. I think in universal analytics, there was a lot of different ways to drill into the data. You could, uh, for instance, very simply just click on the dimension name and then it mm. would filter that for you. And then you could still add your secondary dimensions. You could add segmentation, you could do your advanced searches and, and really like tailor the report to your needs in within the user interface. And I don't think that's really how GA4 works anymore. Yeah. Or that's a big difference at least. Uh, you can't really click on, on the dimensions or it won't do anything. <laughs> and then you're limited to adding one secondary dimension yeah. and then the filtering uh, happens here up top and you so you have to add filter from here and then um, you add it uh, you search for your session default campaign group and then you have to there select it and then apply for it to work and then you can still add your secondary dimension by by clicking on the plus sign and searching for what you want to filter and then that's kind of it. We yeah. you can add some some um, like a comparison audience or or segment your audience still, but but this is a bit more limited in what you can do. I would call it even standard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I agree. And as well, the from like from the metric side of view, you could in the university you could actually choose which ones you would like to choose. And now I think it's. It is what it is. Yeah, it's more locked in. And I think overall, I feel like there's maybe fewer reports, yeah. fewer pre-built and, and fewer things to customize. So it's definitely a bit more skimmed, like cut down and, and a bit very different, I think. And yeah, and I think that's kind of where Supermetrics for, for Google Sheets is, is very good, for instance, or any of our products. But, but we're going to show Google Sheets today because you don't need to then filter mm. every time and, and search. You can build those reports you're going to be looking at with less limitations. So yeah, I'm going to show you now how, how to do that. So we're going to open the sidebar for Supermetrics, click Create New Query. Then we need to have our Google Analytics 4 data source attached and select the correct account. Select what dates we want to look at from the date picker then select what metrics we want. And there we can, for instance, take what we have in Google Analytics 4 in the user interface. Mm. So here we've pre-selected sessions, active users, new users, average session length and engagement rate. And then, as we said, we can you can have uh, like the, mm. pick the dimensions you need. So here we picked session default channel grouping, which was the one we had there in the report as well, country and then device category. So we can have more than two dimensions. Uh, you could even have more, but at some point, I don't think the data would make any sense anymore. <laughs> but yeah, th at least three is, is something yeah. that is, I think still makes sense from a data point of view as well. And then we just click get data to table and wait for the queries to run. Yes, and while we wait, I think what is or would be important to mention at this point. What we have noticed is that you have different levels of of the data. So you have the first user data, you have the session based data, and then you have the event based data. So I I think at least for me in the beginning I got a bit lost, I would say, between those. And 
and you have said to me earlier that you feel like the the session base is most most closest to the universal that we yeah we have currently yeah i got a li- bit lost as well <laughs> when uh, first started out with ga4 on that session based i guess is the closest to what universal had yeah. like as a standard and then first user and an event um, dimensions are as well really good but i think those are very like specific use cases so mm. if when in doubt i would go for session uh, channel grouping or session sor- source and medium and so on but yeah now the data has here uh, populate this so we can see that we get all those three different dimensions we want and uh, data split by them and it will bring uh, all the data you have for this so so now it brought us all the a hundred and so rows of, of data split in those dimensions and uh, sessions and here we could even add a filter if you're only interested in a, like a specific device or a specific channel or a specific country or countries and and make it like a report that mm. we could then refresh quickly um, or even put a scheduled refresh so it would be updated like daily or, or every week based on your needs. That sounds super good. And at least for me, these reports have covered some of the needs that I, I have been used to using the universal and the really modificatable like reports that you can, you can quickly in a meeting uh, search for something specific knowledge and and these scheduled reports or just like a one-time query even they usually cover the fact that you need to see from specific campaign where is the traffic coming from and and what is the quality and so on yeah so i think that's something that has been really helpful yeah yeah and next we're gonna talk about data retention ownership and accuracy Talking about data retention, ownership and accuracy, uh, like from the data ownership perspective, if your data is hosted in Google Analytics, it's owned by Google. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, and still it's like, you've spent probably a lot of time setting it up, paying for ads that drive traffic there. So really taking ownership of your data is something I think we're mm. moving up like the whole there's a whole like movement towards that in in many ways but yeah if it's only in GA4 then you never know what's going to happen to that data yeah uh and like speaking about the data and and for example the retention part I think at least for now as long as we have been using GA4 our understanding is that there's a limitation for the explore view to that you can extend it from two months to 14. But like what happens after the 14 months, we don't know yet. So it's, I think it will appear from the, or disappear from the, the explore view. But I guess the other reports still are, are showing it. Yeah, I guess it's a bit unclear at the moment still how the data like, yeah. uh, when it starts to <laughs> go like, past 14 months what will actually or maximum 14 months what yeah. will actually happen and and how will you be sure that the data you are looking at is actually still when you look like far back in the past mm. what is it actually the full data or has something like been removed due to it being too old and you mentioned that the two to four months i think we can look here in in how do you set your data mm. retention because uh we go to the admin panel and to the data settings and then data retention. I, the standard that the profile comes with is two months, but if you want actually to retain it for 14 months, you need to select it yourself and then save it to for it to actually yeah. work. Good tip. <laughs> Please do that. One other thing, like when thinking about the, the data accuracy, I, I think that at least we're in Helsinki time, so greetings from the winterland. <laughs> uh, usually when I look at reports in the morning, the data is not complete. So I think it's a good good note that, that you try to investigate your own data and, and check it in the morning and then maybe during the day and in the afternoon and see if there are any changes in the numbers. And at least for me, when I do reports that needs to be done first thing in the morning, I always have a small <laughs> 
disclaimer that the data still might change. Yeah, that's the so I guess what we're seeing is that the overall data comes through, but then if you're breaking it down by yeah. any kind of channel or, or source groupings or anything, then those come in as unassigned for yeah. the previous day in the morning. So there's definitely some kind of processing time that you need to be aware of. And and when you're looking at, at very recent data, then again. Yeah. But I guess, do you have anything else to add about the accuracy or? Yeah, no, I think, uh, I think still just taking like ownership of your data is a huge mm-hmm. thing. So moving that data into a data, your own data into a data lake or a data warehouse is something like we highly recommend and we can help there. <laughs> we have a whole suite of products dedicated to moving data yeah. out of your ad platforms and your uh, web analytics tools and taking ownership of it in your own tools and, and storing it there for your own needs. So so you never have to ask like, will this is this the same data that I was looking at two years ago, for instance? So. It will be with you. That's smart. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and one last thing. The video started of <laughs> saying that you cannot copy and paste. Well, you cannot, but we can show you a trick how to do it. <laughs> so uh, instead of just p- pressing like Control C, Control V, uh, you can add con- or you can click Control and then click your mouse and click Copy, and then you can get all your. <laughs> For example, the campaign names that might be sometimes a bit hard to write in hand on in on the different filters or searches. Yeah, or event names that you really want to yes. be accurate. Yes. So that's how you do it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>